Wake up, Marta. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so I'm going to call a meeting to order, and I'm going to ask Stephanie to call the roll. Okay, Marta Larson. Present, uh, uh, participating from Northfield Township, Michigan. Marie Grass. Present, calling in from Mylan. Bonnie Weber. Present, calling in from Pittsfield Township. Elizabeth Thompson. I, oh, I believe she said she was missing this week. Uh, she um, is an excused absence, yeah. I believe. Is that true? Yep, that is true. Um, Ellen Offen. <clears throat> oh, sorry, Ellen, you're muted. <laughs> Present from Ann Arbor City. Right. Steve Stein. Here from Ann Arbor. Bennett Stark. Uh, present from District 9, Ann Arbor. Margaret Reynolds. Present from Pittsfield Township. And it looks like we're missing Jason. And uh, you have corn. You're all set. Thank you. Um, okay, so the next item on the agenda is public participation. I see that we have one member of the public present. Do you wish to say anything or remain silent? Raise your hand if you wish to be called on. Okay, hearing no response, uh, we'll close the call to the public and we won't need to respond to public participation. Um, since Jason is not present, I think we will defer that agenda item until uh, he is present if he's able to attend. Um, so with that, um, I would like to note that I'm going to uh, amend the agenda to add two discussion items. Um, item C, bylaws revision. And item D, uh, letter to Gary Muntz. Uh, so we'll take those up under discussion items. Next is the approval for minutes of the minutes. So we're gonna need a motion for that. I approve the minutes or motion to approve the minutes. Do you have a support? Is that you, Margaret? Are you voting to support or are you raising your hand for something else? Well, I'm gonna ask Stephanie to send me the documents for today's meeting. Okay, I can send those again. Give me one second. Sorry about that, Margaret. Um, okay, so do we have a second for the motion? I second it. Bonnie, okay, thank you. Stephanie, can you make a point to check with Margaret the, a, a couple of days, or maybe a day after you send out the items to make sure she's received them and if she's not, troubleshoot that? Yeah. I'll um, Margaret, I'm going to send them right after we do the roll call for the minutes, I'll send them to you. And if you don't get them, just flag me, um, just in case your email's incorrect or something. Um, so yeah. Okay. I think maybe there's something wrong with the mailing list. I okay. never get them. But yeah, I actually good. didn't send them to the mailing list this time. I sent them to individual emails because okay. the mailing list has been giving issues. So I've tried to send them to individual emails. So we'll, we'll troubleshoot that. All right. Thank you. Um, okay, so Stephanie, would, we're um, vote, gonna vote now on whether to approve the minutes or not. And Stephanie, would you call the roll, please? Yep, Marta Larson. Yes. Marie Grass. Yes. Bonnie Weber. Yes. Ellen Offen. Yes. Okay, Steve Stein. Yes. By the way, I wanna just... Oh. Say that they're like the best minutes I've ever seen. They're so <laughs> comprehensive and robust. Bonnie and well, we aim to please. Thank <laughs> you, Stephen. Thank you. Uh, Bennett Stark. Yes. And Margaret Reynolds. Abstain. Okay, the minutes pass. Thank you, everybody. Uh, next time on the agenda is subcommittee updates and the first subcommittee to report uh, will be the communications committee. Yeah, I'll report out on that. We uh, wrapped up the work on the needs assessment 
summary linking all of the reports on that document that you received, um, I believe it was on Monday. Um, so that is the, the final version. It's updated, it's ready to go. Hopefully you've already been sending it out to your contacts. We worked with Marta to work on her slide deck to the commissioners for the discussion next week. And then we also drafted those emails for you to send to your elected board of commissioners, as well as the emails that go out to your network. Did everyone receive those templates? Um, has there been any issues, any comments on, on those? Margaret, did you receive them? Pardon? Did you receive those? I, I did, and I've been working on that. I, I did mention uh, to Marie, I think, um, who, I'm wondering who's taking on the um, uh, not-for-profit leaders to send to them. I thought maybe we should chat about that. Sure. So I sent uh, the materials to the Healthy Aging Collaborative, uh, a chair facilitator and Dina, um, who I think is a chair facilitator. I don't remember, but uh, I sent it to three of them so they could distribute it to their collaborative who covers the majority of, of that network. Um, I would encourage all of you to look at nonprofits in your district uh, and share those documents directly with those age-friendly organizations in your district. Um, I had Margaret ask about that and then someone else asked how they find them too. And honestly, I do a Google search <laughs> to see who's in my area. Another way to do it would be to go to one of those nonprofit finders, like a 990 website to see uh, who else might be in your area. But unfortunately, it's just a lot of groundwork. Um, there is a directory with um, Catholic Social Services ahead of the curve. They have a directory. Area Agency on Aging has a directory on their website. And then Catholic Social Services also has a printed uh, directory. Um, so the, all of those are resources to try and find agencies and nonprofits that may be in your area uh, to, to communicate with. Um, if anyone's concerned about two of us messaging them pe people, uh, it's usually not a bad thing to show up twice on somebody's radar, especially with some of these busy nonprofits and other agencies. So that would be the approach that I encourage everyone to take. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Ellen, did you have something to add to this? You have your hand up. I didn't get them. Okay. I'll send it to you. I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I just was okay. searching when you were talking and did my junk even, and I didn't get it. Sorry. Okay. Nope. That's all right. I will. I will forward it to you. Thank you. And that's yeah, why thanks. we have these subcommittee updates in case mm -hmm. someone missed something. Then we can be sure that to remedy that. Did anyone else not get it, or have any issues with it? If you find that, like Ellen, that you didn't you didn't get it, please let me know. Read, feel free to reach out to me anytime, and I'll be happy to forward that information to you. Okay. Anything else on communications? No. Nope. I'd like to thank you for drafting the slide deck. I have made some changes, but um, hopefully they make it even better. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you hate it, when you see it, give it at the Board of Commissioners. Maybe you shouldn't tell me. I don't know. Um, okay. Um, needs assessment is the next subcommittee. Um, so I guess that's, again, you, Marie. Yeah, I'll report out on that. So we discussed um, really what should our next steps be, knowing that annually we're trying to create this needs assessment. Um, and we just finished that one. So we discussed some goals around that. One, of course, is that with the needs assessment, we're passing it on to the county commissioners. And it's 
hopefully to help in help the county commissioners know where to invest and how to invest public funds into aging services and support it us that way. Um, but we also talked about how we should be doing this strategically. So we started talking about what our role as a collaborator would be in a countywide aging sector strategic plan, master plan, blueprint for healthy aging. Those are all terms that other uh, areas have used. Um, so we just started discussing what that might look like. Um, and we'll have more information as as we discuss that more. Um, we also started talking about what other need and gap areas we'd like to dig deeper into, um, such as the three that that came up before we started talking about the annual needs assessment goals were things like aging in place services, caregivers, and infrastructure. There is a background noise. Yeah, coming that's from. what I raised my hand on. I'm having a hard time hearing. Does anyone have a background going, some talking in the background where they are? Or TV. Or television on? <coughs> okay. That's better. Okay. Bonnie, Margaret, any um, any comments, anything additional that you felt like I missed in the update? No, I, I thought we had a really good meeting and um, it's exciting to build on the needs and assessment report going forward and what we're you know going to be doing at the end of this year as well. So we're keeping that in mind as we build forward and starting to explore the um, strategic participating in some type of a strategy for the county. Um, I think that is really good for this subcommittee to look into. So it was very exciting. I liked it. I agree. Yeah, you know, it was um, it was a good meeting. You know, one thing we uh, other areas that <clears throat> to explore. I think Steve has brought up several times the nursing home situation or extended care facility rehab that sort of thing in Washtenaw County. Is that right, Steve? Um, yes. I, um, okay. I have. We. I'm. I'm just remembering that, and maybe we should add that to the list. I don't know. It is on the yeah. list. Is it? Your oh yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, in a recent conversation I had with Stephen, um, I asked him to look at what other counties have done um, to give us some sort of framework, because usually nursing homes are, because they're state funded, they're Medicare, Medicaid funded, um, they're typically out of scope. So I asked him to look a little bit more specifically into what other counties have done to give us an idea of what kind of impact that we can, we can be having in that area. Okay, good. So that'll be up. Um, Bennett, did you have something to add? Uh, I do. I would like to reinforce uh, what ha just has been said by Margaret. There was an article in the New York Times several days uh -huh. ago that the amount of um, investment by equity firms in the nursing home industry has really, uh, you know, increased significantly. And this is in the last decade or so. Well, I mean, that is um, ominous. Uh, and so I do think that uh, research um, is warranted in the area. Yeah, I, I saw that article too, Bennett. I think it might also be a good idea to decide if we're focusing narrowly on nursing homes or if we're focusing on extended care facilities or if we're focusing on residential um, facilities. Aging in place and also aging in place mm -hmm. opportunities. Because a survey that we saw, I'm sorry to jump in, I'm sorry. Um, the survey that we saw uh, that we've reviewed, um, a lot of older adults want to age in place. They want to stay in their home. They, you know, they really don't want to move into a nursing home facility. If possible, they'd like to stay at home. So I think that all kind of rolls into that, you know, same, same area. Yeah, although I think specifically what Stephen may have been referring to are places, are places that are the alternative to live, to staying, to uh, aging mm -hmm. place. Um, yes, that's an important thing for us to discuss when we're doing our strategic plan. 
Stephen, do you have something you wanted to add there? Add. Yeah, no, just, you know, I think uh, everything that was said, um, I'm probably the strongest advocate for people aging in place, but there'll always be people that, you know, wind up in assisted living and in nursing homes. So um, nursing homes are a little different because it's so regulated and there's so much data about what's happening that isn't out in the public eye. So that's why I separate it out, not that it's more or less important. I do think that the decisions about assisted living are decisions that I think we can make an impact on because it is not regulated. So there's no information about it. And yet there's a lot of dissatisfaction. So I think it should be separated out because they're different, but I, I do hope that our Commission on Aging does um, do some work on that so that people can make you know, well-informed choices because they have insights to the care and the experience of residents in those buildings. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing what you find out about what other places are doing and, and that'll be a good addition to the discussion, I think. Um, okay, anything else on um, needs assessment before we move ahead? Okay, ARPA com subcommittee. Yep, we uh, wrapped up the proposal. I wanna thank everybody that helped and contributed and providing us with information and with citations and edits. Um, so the older adult recovery plan has been completed. We did send it to Jason. We did ask him to please present it to the board of commissioners and enter it into the ARPA fund processing. However, the proposals get presented to the Board of Commissioner to get considered for funding. So we have done that. Um, Mark is going to be presenting it on April 20th to the board. Um, so we're just asking everyone to reach out to your community, um, send it out to anyone that you think may have, you know, be able to um, send a uh, email or a letter of approval or support for it. And now we're just waiting to find out what the next process was the Board of Commissioners. So we won't have another um, ARPA update until we find back from the um, Board of Commissioners on the status of the report. So that's where we are. Thank you. Any discussion on that? Questions? Great work. Thank you. Great. Um, the next subcommittee report is potential millage and Elizabeth is not able to be here. She has a conflicting meeting. So she asked me to um, uh, present her report. She sent me a, an email with uh, what to include in that report. So I'm just going to read her email so I don't mess it up. Um, so she says the subcommittee met on April 6th. We considered additional information that would be helpful to the board of commissioners as they consider the commission's recommendations. We decided to examine programs provided to older adults in the county in previous years that have been cut or eliminated due to lack of funding. Uh, Ellen and Marta volunteered to research the transportation domain, uh, focusing especially on WAVE and People's Express. Uh, Elizabeth will contact senior centers for information. Uh, Chris Lemon of the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation and Allison Foreman from Ypsilanti Meals on Wheels will be meeting with the subcommittee to discuss the Say Yes to Seniors group's plans concerning a senior millage proposal. And our next meeting is planned for May 4th at 3 p.m. So that is her report. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Stephen, you have your hand up. Uh, yeah, just a couple of things. One is uh, in regards to meeting with um, Chris Lemon and the other person you mentioned, do we, do we have a date for that? That's just, realize, um, I assume we're meeting in between now and the next meeting? I do not know the answer to that question. You probably should ask Elizabeth. You know, okay, send, her, send her an email and ask her because I don't I'll, know the answer. Okay, I'll do that. And then I, I just wanted to mention, you know, one comment that really was post meeting. Unfortunately, I, I uh, got absent-minded and missed the meeting, um, but was in regards to that, it feels, it, it feels important to me that we as a subcommittee come back to the commission in a timely way so that if the Commission on Aging wants to recommend to the um, Washington County Commission that a millage is put on the 
on the ballot that we are able to do that in a timing situation that would allow for that to happen in November. Um, so we, we may we may not recommend it, but whether we recommend or not recommend it, it seems like the Commission on Aging, you have to think backwards in time from November to figure out when it is that we would have to make a decision if we wanted to, to, to make that recommendation. Um, Duly noted, but I think this is also something you should take up with Elizabeth since she's kind of organizing the meetings. Sure, sure. Just bringing it out to the commission as something that, uh, um, you know, I'm hoping we can all advocate for a decision we made. Thank you. Anything else on that subcommittee report? Okay. Seeing no hands. Um, we're going to move on to discussion items. The first item on the list is officer's terms. Um, I know Bonnie had a question about that and I think we sent it, she sent an email to Peter and I don't know if an answer has been received. Peter, did you have anything on that? I did see the question. I don't have an answer on it yet, uh, but I, I'm asking. Okay, that'll be on the next meeting agenda then. Um, <clears throat> So the next item on the agenda is strategic planning for the Commission on Aging for 2022. Oh, Stephen, did you have your, mean to have your hand up or was that an accident? Accident, okay. Strategic planning uh, for 2022. And I thought it might be helpful to look back at what we said um, in the, um, the report on our activities for 2021. We put together a list of planned activities for 2022. So I'm going to share my screen for a minute to share um, the list of things that we said in that um, report that we would be working on uh, in 2022. And I think this will help us um, structure our strategic planning. So we said for 2022 um, that we would map funds supporting the aging sector. Um, that we would advocate for allocations from the county commissioners to support the aging network, including ARPA funds and other sources. That we would work with a healthy aging collaborative to continue identifying inequities and gaps in services for the aging sector and examining available data and existing needs assessments. We said that we would continue to build and expand partnerships within the county's aging network we would expand, examine the existing infrastructure for aging services, pandemic, endemic impact and areas for improvement and initiate the development of a countywide strategy for services for aging adults. So those are the <clears throat> sort of guiding things that we said we would work on this year and we are working on some of them already. Uh, others we haven't started on yet but we should probably begin to work um, on that soon. Um, so with that in mind, um, I don't think I need to keep sharing this, um, but I do think that um, as we think about our, building our strategic plan, and I suspect the strategic planning is going to take more than one meeting, what I'd like to do today is get everything out that we can get out on the table and then maybe assign the officers to sort of sort those things into an organized structure that we can then discuss at the next meeting. That's my intention. Um, does anyone uh, have any concerns about that approach or does that sound like that's gonna work? Bonnie, do you have something? Yeah, I, I think that going down the list and seeing where we are and if, if these particular bullets are already assigned into a subcommittee and they're working on that. I think that's a good way to start that we know that the subcommittee is because you can look at those and you can see that we do have subcommittees that are already working on some of those. And then also a discussion if now that we're into April, if they have something else has come up that we'd like to add to add to that list for us to work on this year. This, that would be, this would be a good time for discussion to be able to do that as well. I think we'll put that into the assignment to the officers to organize. Um, Stephen? Yeah, I, I would like to make a motion um, that we 
seek funding from the county um, commission to have a, a someone who their works their life's work is strategic planning to support um, this effort. I think that we all have best intentions, but the idea that somebody would actually take um, you know take on the responsibility of supporting the effort, um, someone who has experience with um, the aging um, network to have some experience in regards to working with government and the community, um, I think would be a really valuable, worthwhile um, spending of county funds. And so I'd like to make that a motion. I see a number of hands up, but we cannot talk about this until we have a second. Is there anyone who wishes to second this motion at this time? Do we have discussion before we vote? We're not voting. We have to have a second before we can discuss. Um, is there anyone? Well, I'll, 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 second I'll second it for the purposes of discussion. Okay. Right. Okay. Same here. Okay. So now I have a list of people with their hands up. Start with <coughs> Marie, then Bonnie, then Ellen. So Marie. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so I think today what we're trying to talk about is is what we as a commission want to be accomplishing this year. So like our strategic plan, our milestones for this year. And that's different from the countywide strategic plan. I believe that this body can decide by itself uh, what we want to prioritize and how we want to do that. Um, I do think that for a countywide strategic plan, uh, we would need a facilitator because that's not something we should even be like the the lead on which should be something that we are collaborating on and participating on um and that's a conversation that we're just starting in the needs assessment um so i would ask that we hold off on on that until we have a little bit more information about who wants to be involved what other players are around and and things like that but again i think the conversation for today with strategic plan is milestones for this year. How do we want to get to the end of 2022? What do we want to have on that next annual report? I think is what we should be focusing on. Okay, next in line is Bonnie. Um, I agree with um, Maria. I think the term strategic planning for the COA for 2022 is misleading for what we're really talking about. I do believe it's milestones and goals. It's what we want to be looking at who we want to be presenting to us, what other information do we want to gather? That's really not like a typical strategic plan. The strategic plan for the county that is one of our bullet points, absolutely, Stephen, and the, uh, the needs and assessment committee is now starting to work with that and funding and getting an outside person to facilitate and help develop that strategic plan is in the beginning stages of that on the needs assessment committee. So I think there are two different, two different completely things, you know, the, and for this particular one here are the strategic planning, I think maybe goals and milestones is a better description of it. So I wouldn't, I would not support having somebody come in to facilitate to have us who we want to hear present to us or what we want to work on. But on the flip side, getting involved in the county, having the COA much more involved in the strategic plan. Absolutely, Stephen, I'm 100% in favor of that. Okay, Ellen, you had your hand up. Did you take it down or do you still wish to speak? I hear you saying no, even though you have yourself muted. Okay, Stephen? Yeah, no, and, and I heard um, everyone's remarks. I guess here's what I was um, thinking you know, when I was uh, asking for that. It has really more to do is like, what, what does the Commission on Aging want to be when they grow up? And I think it's not to in any way underestimate how much has already been accomplished um, and will be accomplished. But the idea that we think you know, three years, five years down the line, and what what is this? What do we want to be? And that thinking that there might be, you know, people that um, have had experience in other counties, in other states, 
um, help join us in sort of really thinking about a, a strategic plan, meaning not this year and milestones for this year, but what should the COA, how can we be most effective in accomplishing the goals that we want to accomplish? And, and that I, I just think that um, the idea of sort of seeking out sort of best, um, you know, someone with experience over um, in the country to support those efforts would be a healthy thing to do at this stage. We sort of have gotten past infancy and we're, you know, at a, a much better state than, you know, a blob, so to speak, with all the accomplishments this year. But I still think that to move to the next phase of maturity on how we can have an impact, some external help would be fruitful. That, that is the reason for my call for support. I see Peter has your hand up. Peter? Yeah, I, I was just going to offer kind of a strategic uh, kind of word of advice for when making some of these requests. I do think that like obviously y'all are able to make those motions and, and make those recommendations at any point. Uh, I do think it's helpful and, and, and important to like kind of be aware of all requests that are going in and having them kind of be like focused and not always brought from the floor but sometimes prepared ahead of time so it might be like let's take the spirit of emotion and like write it out in more detail kind of like what has been done with uh different proposals i know uh like the the arpa subcommittee met with jason and really ironed out a lot of those details so that he could help bring it i think uh uh in general, like intent for those things are great. I would just kind of recommend a, a like, let's let's try and get it to a place where we have things written out ahead of motions. Um, just because I think that's easier to process versus just handing over a, a like a one word statement, which is the motion, being able to move like a document or a like written up like mini proposal can be, can be really helpful. Uh, so I hear what all y'all are saying, and I would just recommend that as y'all are finalizing what you want to do with this, maybe think of moving it in that way, just because uh, I, I know the commissioners get a lot of recommendations for various things. And oftentimes supporting documents and stuff is great, but if the motion is just the motion, uh, then all they see is that like one line sentence. So just wanted to offer that piece of it, like procedural advice. Okay, Stephen, you still have your hand up? Yeah, well, I'll just say, you know, I want to say that I listen to, you know, what Peter said, and I'm glad to with, withdraw the motion and to uh, come back with a, you know, maybe a more comprehensive and thoughtful uh, motion with some rationale behind it. So I, I withdraw my motion. Okay. Thank you. Also, strategically, uh, or not strategically, procedurally, I, I don't think this has come up, but when a motion of withdrawn, the person who second the motion also has to second the withdrawal, so. I withdraw. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you for reminding me, Peter. I was just thinking whether I should do that or not. Um, okay, so I guess we're done with that discussion for today, um, and we'll get back to whatever Stephen brings forth um, at that time. Stephen, are you on, you're on the needs assessment subcommittee or no? No, I'm not. No. Okay. Because it might not be a bad idea to discuss it with Marie and see if the two of you can come to some sort of collaboration on that. That would be great. I'd love to do that. Um, okay, next agenda item is bylaws, and uh, this is kind of maybe an example of what Peter was talking about, because at our last meeting, we passed a proposed amendment to our bylaws, and we sent it up the chain, and um, uh, Corporation Council has recommended that we reword that bylaws amendment to accomplish more accurately what we were trying to do. So uh, that mo motion was brought by Ellen and supported by Margaret. I have proposed text to substitute for what we passed last time that the Corporation Council provided. So at this time, I'm going to share my screen and show you what the Corporation Council proposed. And then I'm going to ask whether the people that made and supported the motion would agree to um, substitute this text. So this is the text of the um, proposed bylaws amendment 
which is a substitution for what we passed at our proposed substitution for what we passed at our last meeting. This is the amendment to section 5.6 open meetings. And the wording that has been proposed is the commission strives to hold meetings in a transparent manner so that the public may observe and participate. As such, the commission's meetings may be held virtually, in person, or a combination of virtual and in person. All meetings will be open to the public unless the commission holds a closed session. The meetings will be recorded. Details regarding the meeting and how to access the meetings shall be posted publicly in advance of the meeting. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and ask Ellen and Margaret, first Ellen, then Margaret, what your opinion is of changing the wording and whether you'd like to make a new motion to substitute this for what was passed at the last meeting. Ellen, I'll let you go first. Well, the, um, the information I think is correct. I'm fine and I would support the new version of the amendment. Thank you, Margaret. I am as well. Okay, so then I think the proper procedure um, Peter, can you tell me, do we need to, uh, I'll get to you in just a second, Bennett. Peter, do we need to um, withdraw the, do we need to do something about the previous thing we passed or just to have a motion to substitute this wording for what was passed at the last meeting? You can just motion to substitute. Okay, thank you. Bennett, did you have something to add? Well, to is it possible to see the old wording so that it can be compared Oh, that would be really good if I had thought to do that in advance. Let me see if I can locate it. Stephanie, can you pick that out of the minutes? Yep, I have it open. I'll share my screen. Okay. And I can offer the rationale as to why the, the recommendation was uh, offered, if, if that would be helpful. For that us. would be very helpful. Thank you. Um, so this is actually something that uh, even before what you did last week, even if we're looking at the original bylaws, uh, the original bylaws needed to be up, updated. Um, and it has to do with the Open Meetings Act. Currently, the like overwhelming guidance is that uh, bodies that say that they are under the Open Meetings Act uh, currently have to have a physical in-person meeting. Um, up until December, that was not the case because there was exceptions for virtual meetings that ended uh, at the start of the year. Um, however, as you all know, you all talked to the board of commissioners, they talked with corporation council and it, it gave guidance that said like advisory bodies like this do not have to comply with the Open Meetings Act. Um, so while that was guidance from corporation council, the bylaws still said we mm -hmm. have to comply with Open Meetings Act. So essentially, what this is doing is giving the exact same kind of rationale of this is an advisory group that wants to be accessible. So we're allowing for virtual meetings. Um, and it just kind of takes out the word Open Meetings Act because we've determined locally, this group doesn't always have to follow the Open Meetings Act um, in terms of meeting in person, but should follow the spirit of being accessible. So this wording captures both without making it so you all have to meet in person. Okay. Stephanie, would you share the text from the previous? Thank oh, you. Oh, yeah, sorry. I thought I was sharing. One second. There, can you see that now? Nope. No. Oh, let's try this one. Okay, can you see that now? It's the highlighted section. Yes. Okay, there you go. So uh, what we're going to... Um, entertain a motion to do is to amend section 5.6 open meetings to read uh, and then substitute the text that we now are proposing, which I will show it, share my screen in just a minute again. But is this meeting what you needed, Bennett? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so you can stop sharing, Stephanie. So, um, let me just get back to. I have too many things open on my screen, so it's taking me a minute to locate everything. So this is the. Um, proposed text. So I would entertain a motion to. revise the 
I haven't forgotten what I exactly was supposed to do. Re revise the previous motion. Peter, can you help me out here? I'm like lost in space. Yeah. <laughs> so since this was a previous motion, you can have the, the folks who uh, previously moved and seconded it uh, support a motion to substitute uh, the originally proposed language with this new language. Okay, so we're going to have a motion to replace the previously adopted uh, wording for amending section 5.6 Open Meetings Act, Open Meetings, not Act, uh, with the current text. How's that? Did I, did I get that this time? Okay, so the question is, Ellen, do you wish to move, make this motion? Yes, um, I would like to substitute the Open Meetings Act um, that we have presently for the one we put in. So do I need to say more, Peter? You are, you're good. All right, Except you. for the word act. We're not using the word act. Yeah. Um, and Margaret, are you supporting that? I am, second. Okay, so now I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can focus myself again. And does anyone have any discussion before we call the question? I do. Bonnie? I just want to thank Jason, who's not here, for expediting this. He got this up to the council very quickly, and they came back with a recommendation. And um, I'm very appreciative of his quick actions and turnaround with the council. So um, that's greatly appreciated. And I would like to say as chair, what I have learned from this experience is don't propose bylaws amendments, at least in form of a motion, until you run it by the corporation council. If I forget, please remind me in the future. <laughs> I do have I do have one. Well, since we have Peter here for point of process, so if we do want to amend the bylaws, we just can't go and do it without a motion. So, would the motion be to amend the bylaws with certain language and forward it to the county council before we bring it to a vote? I mean, I mean, I just can't write one and send it to the county council, you know, as a lone ranger here. So what's the process? So I would say if anybody uh, wants to make a motion to amend bylaws, what I would recommend doing is kind of preparing the language before a meeting. Uh, once it's on an agenda, uh, you can send it to uh, myself and uh, Jason and say like, hey, we're wanting to do this. Here's the rationale why. Can you run it by to make sure everything is clear? So when, when the uh, materials are um, creating, I would just include that with the process if there's ever amendments to that. Yeah, and I don't think we necessarily need a motion to propose an amendment to the bylaws. We just have, our, have to have a motion to adopt the amendment to the bylaws. So I think um, that's something the officers need to discuss. If we need to look at the bylaws anymore, then we should put that on our list of activities, you know, coming up and um, do a more systematic approach. Sounds good. This was something that we needed to do time sensitive, but yeah, it's good. Okay. Any more discussion before we ask for a roll call? I have one more. Oh, Peter, have just, some... Yeah, just one more part of, point of order, just so y'all are aware. Uh, um, whenever their bylaws changes, I know this is the first time y'all are ever making an amendment to bylaws. Um, so it's important to just kind of highlight what happens next. I will bring it to the next board of commissioners meeting, which will be, uh, it's, it's not quite going to be uh, next week's meeting uh, as we missed the, the agenda deadline for that. So uh, starting May 4th uh, or on May 4th is when they will vote to approve your uh, amended bylaws. Um, so technically you will still have the same bylaws until uh, May 4th, but at that point, if they approve them, that is when the switch happens. Um, and that's actually before your next meeting on May 6th. So I should be able to say on May 6th that those, those uh, uh, amended bylaws were approved. Okay, excellent. Okay, Stephanie. Okay, uh, Marta Larson. Yes. Marie Gress. Yes. Bonnie Weber? Yes. Ellen Offen? Yes. Steve Stein? Yes. Bennett Stark? Yes. And Margaret Reynolds? Yes. Motion passes.
Okay, now I see as I'm looking at the agenda that I got so turned around that I completely skipped over strategic planning after we talked about strategic planning. <laughs> so this is not my fine. I was up at 4 a.m. this morning because my brain wouldn't stop thinking. So um, I'm obviously not functioning at a 100% here. So we're going to go back and finish up the agenda item on strategic planning before we go any further. So here's the process that I have in mind. I would like each person in the meeting to share some of their thoughts about our strategic plan for the rest of this year. Recognizing that all of our terms expire at the end of this calendar year, and it's up to the discretion of the Board of Commissioners as to whether any or all of us are reappointed for the future two-year term. So we need to be thinking about our strategic plan for this year um, to the extent that we can possibly do that. I would like to know from each of you what you envision in terms of a purpose or goals for this remaining time we have this year, um, what we still want to learn and how we could help to guide the Board of Commissioners um, in, in uh, alignment with our mission to advise them on um, things that would be helpful to older adults in the county. So I'm just going to start around from what I see on my screen. And with that in mind, I'm starting, just so everybody has a time to compose their thoughts, I'm gonna start with Bonnie, and then I'm gonna to go to Bennett, and then I'm gonna to go to Marie, then I'm gonna to go to Margaret, then Stephen, and then Ellen. So Bonnie, you're up. All right. Well, for the remainder of this year, um, I think that we are very well organized. We have subcommittees that are extraordinary as far as I'm concerned with relationship to other organizations that I've worked with Then are dedicating so much of their time. Um, my, my personal feelings for the goal of this year, of course, are sur surrounded by what happens with the ARPA proposal. Because if the ARPA proposal is funded, that we have submitted, my rest of the year will be taken up with that. I will be working very hard with the county and the BLC and the subcommittee and the other organizations that are requesting funds. So that's kind of where I'm kind of just kind of waiting in a waiting mode for myself personally on the commission. The needs assessment I think is on track. They're doing really well. I, I like to see them continue the way they're going. I, I, I think they've got a great plan. And then the only other thing um, I think want to do is because time is so precious for us to decide if we do want to hear presentations from other organizations like we did last year, because here we're already into April and we really haven't had any really presentations to the organization. Who, who do we want to hear from? You know, prioritize what we want to focus on, who we want to come in and talk to us because you know every meeting is, is very important and I, I just don't want to waste waste time if it's not on a goal that we're actively looking at to accomplish. So that's kind of where I am. Okay, thank you. Bennett? Well, I mean, um, I, my bailiwick as I see it is um, the um, seniors and uh, ongoing COVID, which doesn't seem to end. And um, I guess my objective or goal is how can I energize uh, the self-organization or mobilization of seniors? And um, that is a good question. And I don't know what the um, don't know what the answer is. I mean, I did uh, <clears throat> the president of the residency council did get one of my outreach um, emails, and she is aware of that issue. And then perhaps um, moving, um, and I <clears throat> the center for independent Le living. Will Purvis is part of my outreach, and perhaps in some way working with uh, that group. And then as well, the fact that the city of Ann Arbor did so little on 
to my estimation, on behalf of um, seniors, and it just seems like a block um, or whatever, a um, doing whatever I can to sort of uh, highlight uh, the issue for the city uh, is um, a concern as well. Thank you. Thanks, Bennett. Uh, Marie. Yeah, a uh, milestone I would love to see our group hit is that initiation of the countywide strategic plan. Um, we're, we're starting those talks. Like we had that first talk in the needs assessment and I just feel like it's, it's very important that we get that moving and we get that going. So if let's say it's an entire new uh, group of us next year, that that's already running, that's already moving. It's something that they can jump in on and, and keep uh, going as well. So that's that's pretty high up on my list. Thank you. Margaret? Yeah, I, you know, <clears throat> this, is, this is a little hard because we have so many things that, um, that we need to be focused on. Bonnie, I think you're right. A lot of us will be uh, absorbed if we get the, our uh, funding approved. Um, it will take a lot of time, uh, but, but certainly it is key and a high priority for all of us. I think for me, I see the millage um, and support of the millage um, as, as a key feature in our success. Um, so I, I, I support the Say Yes to Seniors group uh, moving forward with that. And um, I want us to be very supportive in any way we can. I, I think it's uh, key as we move, move forward. And I'd also like to make sure that we keep the, um, the notion of aging justice foremost in our minds. And uh, that's important to me. That's Thank it. Uh, Stephen. Uh, um, yeah, I think, you know, I agree with um, Marjorie about the millage that I think, um, you know, I think we wanna sort of, um, again, decide if we want to recommend the millage or not and early enough for that to be possible in this ballot year. Um, I also think that in, in deciding that, we then also could offer recommendation on how the millage can be, um, you know, how, how it could be written and also how the county could be prepared um, to process the millage should it pass. Um, I think that there was opportunities we hear secondhand on how the mental health millage came out. And so us being able to really have a good plan prior to a passing of a millage could be a really important step for the COA. And I think that will um, take time so that if the millage should pass, and I know that's a lot of steps that may or may not happen, that there really is a good game plan on how choices are made on how the millage is used, how do you monitor those who receive the funds, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's gonna be a lot of work that um, the COA in partnership with others uh, could play a major role to, to ensure that any kind of tax dollars really go to, to have the greatest impact. Um, I still believe in a long-term strategic plan for COA that especially if we potentially only have one year on the commission, that we have an opportunity to really have a long-term effect even in our one year so that we can think ahead and say, hey, what's the role of the COA in, a, in affecting care um, so that we are as effective a body as possible? Um, and then I would say after that for me is really just specific vulnerable populations that seem to me, I always think about who needs us most. And so that would be 
um, you know, the homebound and the near homebound. Um, I would say um, supportive housing, um, such that people, for example, who live in HUD housing and other housing are able to age in place and not necessarily um, because they can't afford services, wind up in nursing homes unnecessarily. Um, and then you heard my interest in sort of really um, being helpful to ensure that there's high quality nursing homes in, in our county and also high quality assisted living in our county and that people can make really good informed choices on which places they choose if they're in that situation. Thank you. Ellen? Well, I, I'm glad to go last because people said basically what I wanted to prioritize and, and that has to do with um, ensuring that um, everyone has an op people who are aging are getting resources that they need and it's not just the ones who are most able or both physically and financially to us access so it's an equality issue that I would want to highlight. But I think that was said in different ways much better than I just said it. Well, I'm gonna go last because I forgot to include myself in the list. So <laughs> it's not my best day. Um, some of my um, thoughts are, you know, as a chair, I'm interested in making sure that we develop achievable goals for this year, that we not get our goal list so huge that we could not possibly accomplish it. Um, I'm also interested in leaving an organized structure for the next iteration of this board, our commission rather, uh, whoever, maybe all of us will be returning, we don't know. But I would like to leave an organized structure so that they don't have to flounder, that they can just get started right away uh, upon beginning the, the new calendar year. And the, the subject area that I'm most interested in looking at is transportation. Um, I know a little bit about some of the transportation options I know that the county used to fund transportation for seniors and they don't anymore. And I'm interested in looking into the history of that and finding out how that you know, switchover occurred and uh, what's possible. So those are some of my areas that I'm interested in as we look at strategic planning. Stephen, do you have your hand up? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, the one thing that I, I um, forgot to mention, I think is a really important issue for this um, commission is diversity and um, sort of really making sure that we're considering uh, people of color and, and others in our community that you know, aren't necessarily represented on this commission and that we really should be, I think, consciously and transparently focusing on how do we um, support that, um, a population that needs our voice and figuring out how we can make sure that that's part of the commission's work. Thank you. Does anybody else want to add anything after hearing all the different points of view and thoughts? Bonnie and then Stephen, do you still have your hand up? Yes or no? No, okay, Bonnie? Yeah, can can I just can I just ask a question about something that that a couple of people mentioned and and I'm as a commissioner, I'm kind of confused on the process. And it has to do with this um, say yes to the millage process. I, I hear a lot that from the, from the potential millage subcommittee, they reported that we're not an advocacy group. You know, we're the commission on aging. We make recommendations to the board of, board of commissioners. So if I'm gonna make a recommendation to the board of commissioners, I have to have something that I read and understand to recommend. And that's kind of where I get confused. Um, I haven't seen anything come out of the say yes to the millage, not a proposal, not a report, not how, how much millage they're asking for, how much they want, where they want the millage to be spent on, who's gonna management, manage it, what the goals are. Those are all kind of the things as a commissioner, if I, if I wanted to go to my board of commissioner and say, I support this, proposal that they're bringing up or I support what they have on here. I think it has merit. And if you, I support putting it on the ballot so that the people can vote for it, yes or no. I mean, that's kind of the role that I thought that, that I was in on any type of a proposal like we did with the high-speed internet. 
They had a very lengthy proposal. They knew how much money it was. And we just recommended to the board, we think this has merit. We're asking for your support on it. So I'm kind of confused about the part about we should be in the process of writing the proposal and how the money should be spent and what we're doing on it versus they bring us something and say, this is what, what we're going to be asking. We look at it and then make a decision as a commission to recommend to the board, yes, we think this has merit to put on the ballot to let the citizens of Washtenaw County vote on it. Not that we're telling anybody to vote for it. I think um, Jason was very clear on that that we're not supposed to be going out and telling people vote for this. Um, so that's kind of my confusion on this whole say yes to millage and, and where we fit in. So we could have a little bit more discussion on that. I would appreciate it because I'm getting confused on what, what people are thinking we should be doing or what our role is really supposed to be doing on, on helping this. There's a, my personal opinion as a commissioner for district four is if there is a good proposal put in front of me and I think that it has merit and the motion comes on the floor, should we, should we send a letter of recommendation to the board of commissioners, then we should be able to vote yes or no, we recommend that and then forward that recommendation to be put on the ballot. But um, so I'm gonna be quiet and let you guys who are, are very involved in this kind of help me through this process. Well, I think that might be one reason that we called the subcommittee, the potential millage subcommittee. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I think we have to, um, I think it's important for us to discuss some of these things, but I also so think that we don't wanna to get too far down the line of discussing that um, specifically and instead let the subcommittee do their work first and then bring it back. Um, so oh. I, I don't wanna to get too far down the road of, of doing, discussing the potential millage as opposed to doing strategic planning. Do you see where I'm sort of kind of- Yeah, so, so I guess that, that kind of would be, uh, I, I agree. I would really like to see something come out of the potential millage subcommittee, a report to us as the whole commission on, this is what they're doing. This is their proposal. This, you know, this is what they have and have right. the subcommittee bring that to us so that we can discuss that mm -hmm. rather than as, as a group here trying to flounder on it when we have a good subcommittee working on that. Mm -hmm. um, I would be very comfortable with that as, you know, I, you know I, I, I just need to see something, just yeah. not an idea. And that so is the direction that that subcommittee is heading and is looking at answering some of those questions. Okay, okay. thank so you. Steven, and then I have Ellen. Yeah, uh, Bonnie, just in regard to, you know, a response to what you described, think about the upper subcommittee um we you know uh, the subcommittee and now the commission on aging didn't wait for a proposal to come our way what happened was we have requested that the commission on aging assess whether it's appropriate for older adults to receive part of that ARPA funding we then uh, made a recommendation on how those funds could be um, allocated, including a role for the COA in the um, developing the process and then actually being active in the decision making or, or recommendation body. Um, so I would say if you look at what the ARPA subcommittee has proposed and the Commission on Aging has uh, endorsed, I see the same thing for the millage. And so um, I don't I don't see the same inconsistency that you have. And I think that if we're gonna really have an impact as a commission on aging, we should be proactive and not reactive. Um, and this would be one more situation that that's occurred. If, you know, we've gotten um, service providers sharing with us, we've done research in the need summary that has given us enough information that is it a time to be passive and wait, or is it a time to be proactive and do what has been done by the Opera Subcommittee and now the Commission on Aging? So that's that's my take on it. Ellen, you're a member of that subcommittee. Do you want to chime in on that? Yeah, I I, um, I agree. We should not be passive, but I also think that gathering the information and being well thought out and have a lot of knowledge and being able to add that is really important. And we've been doing that. 
So I think in order to bring it in front of the commission, we need to say, this is the, what we agree on. Here's how we see it. And we have this information to back it up. When we did, when we talked to the other um, communities that did have millages, we asked a lot of questions. Now we're asking a lot of what we need because there isn't any reason in my mind and I don't think the committee's mind, I don't want to speak for everybody, but that we have full uh, idea about what the needs are, what we see are the priorities of those needs and um, passing it along to them because the, the politics of the millage committee, the say yes to seniors is not ours. Ours is to provide the information that we've gathered saying, here's why we see it this way. Um, and uh, I know that Steve is going to be on the committee. So maybe at that time he can have the discussions with us about how he sees it and what he wants to do. But at this point, I really think the committee should bring it <laughs> And I would probably not um, want to, to do anything until it was brought forward. People could discuss it, people could, could read it to it, they could have input, and then we could recommend it. And I did, just so you know, I think last week, uh, I'm not doing well either, I, I was up early, but. I just oftentimes don't do well early in the morning. Um, I did talk to my county commissioner. And I mean, I don't think that from my understanding, I don't think he thought that um, we were going to advocate as millage people, but we were going to bring him the, I talked to him a bunch of things, but we were going to bring him the information that we had found out. I talked to him a great deal about the needs. So, I kind of rambled here. Did you all understand what I said? Um, mm -hmm. I would be mm -hmm. very opposed to just going out there. And I, on, a, on a personal level, I think it's the wrong move. You know, from my experience and my work, that's not how I would do it. But that's not important. Okay. Okay, Bonnie and then Stephen. Uh, I, I look at the what we did with the ARPA funding I think in a completely different from a, a different viewpoint than Stephen. The ARPA money was already there. It's federal money. It was open to the community. The invite was out for proposals from the board of commissioners. The invite was from the board of commissioners to submit, not the other way around. And it's not asking for people to vote on a tax millage, you know, something that the community has to pay for. So I, I'm looking at completely different. The BOC, they, they received the federal money they put it out there. Here's the money. If you have a proposal, submit it to us so we can review it and recommend it. As opposed to us recommending or saying to the BOC, hey, we think we should have a millage and the people should have to vote on that. So I, I'm looking at those as, as two different things. Um, the part of not being passive, yes. Get, you know, moving forward, yes. But I agree with Alan that we're not really an advocacy group advocating for, I didn't think we were advocating for the millage, but what we're doing like with a needs assessment, bringing the attention to the board of commissioners, all the needs in our community and the needs that need to be funded. And here are various ways you can fund. And one of the ways is millage and the board of commissioners makes that decision. You know, We're putting forth what the needs are. Um, and I think our needs assessment report that Marta is going to present is a very good beginning and a foundation for that, for the board of commissioners to see what is needed. Um, and then if the you know millage group puts out a good proposal and the board of commissioners says, yeah, here the commission on aging has sent presented all of these needs, this might be a way. That's up to them. But I'm not really looking at us as an advocacy group for millage at all. Um, so yeah, I would like to have something come out of the subcommittee on that and kind of work, work through this whole issue on you know, what our role is in this. So I appreciate that. Okay, and Stephen? Yeah, um, so I'll go, I'll go back because I wanted to comment on what Bonnie said and, and what Ellen said. I guess in regards to Bonnie, I, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily proposing that the Commission on Aging is an advocacy group. I think that Peter had 
I think mentioned and others strongly mentioned that that's not our role um, to be an advocacy group. I, I do think that um, we do have a Commission on Aging the ability to make a recommendation if that's what the commission decides they want to do, that they recommend that they support it. And indirectly, we've done that, I think, in uh, as Marta is speaking to um, the commission and also the needs report mentions it. So, but I do think that having a statement of recommendation. The, the second thing I would say is that it, if there is a millage, we want that to be successful. And so I do think that the county commissioners would benefit from um, both, not only the language that maybe we could offer, and maybe that's less important, but more important is that if a millage is going to be offered, that there's really well thought out plans on, you know, sort of one, the needs, which I think we have done somewhat, but also how that would be structured so that that the process of how those funds would be distributed would be fair, equitable, and well thought out. And I think that the county's commissioners are very busy. The idea that we could work on that would probably increase the chances that they would be supportive of the millage because there is that infrastructure to, uh, to ensure that those funds are well spent. So that was one comment. I think, Ellen, my question is really a question. You said that from your own personal perspective, your experience, that this isn't the way to go. And I, I didn't exactly know what you meant by that. What's the, this? And this is not the way to go. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, what I meant is we want to be well prepared because the county commissioners, there's two things. One is they're going to do what they think priorities of their constituent is and what they can think will work for the total count county. And if we aren't well thought out, have a quality of uh, information and enough information, it isn't something that they're going to be able to use. So that's the first thing. The second thing is it, it may be, I think, uncomfortable for us to uh, be a political advocacy group. We can say we've read it, we support it, or we can decide that we wanna do that individually. That's up to the group. But I do think, and the other thing is they are going to make a decision on um, whether to put it on the ballot, depending on um, a variety of things. One would be our recommendation. Two would be exactly where they and I, I, I um, where they are politically. What what else is on the ballot and what else is going on at the time? So, for example, um, my county commissioner may say, um, I I don't know if we want this on the ballot because this and this is this is going on, or we would like to wait. But I don't think we should pressure them. I think we should be an advocacy group and I don't think we should pressure them. The other thing is um, we don't do wording. We can say, here's something, here are things we think you should add it, but we don't do er wording. First of all, they're gonna go and do what they legally need to do. We don't do that. So it's not, I mean, we can suggest there's our things we care about. But I, and you have at least two of those county commissioners moving on. So that's gonna make a difference to the political group of that because they're gonna be, they're looking, they're running for other positions and there might be more. I just know of two. Yeah. So. I, I really think that, and I also think we have subcommittees for a reason, and that is because, and they've been very successful, the ARPA is a good example, that they do the research, they have the information, many of them have backgrounds, know how to get specific research, and I think we're much better off doing that. Margaret? Thank you. That's have our... you talked to your county commissioner? Um, not about this, no. Okay, well, I, you know, I think that's a decision we ought to talk about in the committee and maybe how we talk to our county commissioners and then we have a, also a better idea. Yeah, and I think, you know, it, it 
you know, clearly I show my bias on the fact that I feel like I have enough information to uh -huh. recommend. And, and so I don't want to not say that. So my own feeling would be is if I did speak to his name is Gates and also that I do it as a, a citizen if I'm advocating and but on the other hand, to understand his perspective on the Commission on Aging as a member of the commission mm -hmm. and really separating those out because I do, uh, I do have a bias as a citizen that I would be hard pressed not to, um, you know, to make sure that I don't in any way suggest the commission is entering into this with a similar type of um, feeling as I do. So I just wanted to mention that, but I, I will make a point of, I'm reaching out to Jason because we have other reasons for me to do that. Okay, Margaret, you've been waiting patiently. Um, <clears throat> well, I just want to say, I, you know, it's good we're having this discussion because I think advocacy uh, is is a tricky uh, tricky thing. Um, and um, Steve. Um, mentioned he will advocate as a private citizen, um, and as the mill, as far as the millage is concerned, I, I think we definitely need that millage, at, and and um, in Washtenaw County, um, it doesn't mean that we advocate as a commission. I, that's not what. I, I think that I agree that's probably not what we do, but um, but we have already done much a good deal of work to educate and inform the commissioners. And that's what I mean by support. We have to continue to do that over and over again. And if they're gonna be in favor of the millage, they have to have uh, the ammunition to, I'm sorry to use that word, I shouldn't, um, but they have, the, have to have uh, the tools to make that work. And, and so I'm, I'm really concerned about making sure that we give them the information and entice them, not pressure them, but make them want a millage. And I think, I think we can do that. So that's, that's why I think um, why I said what I said about the millage. I think it's very important. Okay, so I think we've had a really healthy discussion on the potential millage. Um, and I think at this time we need to move on and get back to strategic planning rather than discussing potential millage. I think we've kind of uh, agreed, at least in principle, that the subcommittee should be requested to continue their work and bring something back to the board when they are, or the commission when they are ready. Um, and so I think we'll move ahead with the agenda on uh, strategic planning. Um, <clears throat> so what I see uh, happening next is that the officers will take all the material that we've discussed today. And I know Stephanie and, and Bonnie have been keeping notes on what has been discussed and sort of spread it out on the table and sort it out into categories and organize it in a way that we can have a, a, a second discussion, a second look at this at our next meeting, if that is okay with everyone. Does anyone have an objection to doing this that way? Not an objection, just a suggestion. Um, if, if Stephanie and I can get on the minutes and, and be able to there's a lot already that's been discussed. I have pages and pages and pages of notes here. So to make sure that we go through everything and get the minutes and, and hopefully before the next officers meeting, at least a rough draft of it or something. Mm -hmm. um, but when the officers are done and we make our decision, I would like if we could put that into a document form so everybody can read it ahead of time because there is so much. It's kind of hard just to talk about it, but if you have time to think, you read a document, make your notes on it and plan for what the discussion is, I think that will help a, a little bit more. If how quickly we can turn it around, I'm not sure, but I, I will we'll do our very best. Um, okay. But I think having something to read before the next meeting would be would be very helpful. I know for me, just as a, you know, just as a commissioner. 
And that was my intended output from the next officers meeting, assuming that we can get all this material together for that meeting, is that we would prepare some sort of written document that would come to the board, the commission, um, to for in time for everyone to have time to consider it and think about it before we have our next meeting. Okay, so that's our um, the goal. And our next meeting is May 6th, so we have some time between now and then. Okay, anything, other thoughts on strategic planning? Um, things that we might have missed, overlooked, whatever. Okay. Yeah. What, hang on, I just keep jumping in on here today. We, one thing we did not talk about was, um, we do have that outstanding list. I really would, you know, if the officers are gonna talk about what we're gonna be doing is, um, thoughts on who we want to hear from or prioritize how do we want to do that because you know we only have so many meetings the rest of the year and they're <laughs> sitting out there and, and people keep asking about you know presentations so we really didn't touch on any of that at all so is there anybody that wants to discuss that do we let it sit um well that was on my mind too bonnie thanks for bringing that up we have this list of potential future topics that's showing up at the bottom of our agenda so we don't forget any of them and i guess in my mind i would like to see the officers propose a plan for dealing with these future topics um, between now and the end of the year keeping in mind that by the end of the year we need to prepare a report on our activities for 2022 like we did for 2021 so um and we'll probably start that in November, right? <clears throat> probably start working on that report in November, yes. So, um, but I, I guess my suggestion, if this sounds okay to the rest of the commission is that the officers kind of slap, slap these potential future topics into a sort of rough schedule, recognizing that we may have to amend the schedule as we go ahead, but at least we'll have a rough schedule. <clears throat> Sounds like it's general, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. So I think we're all set with the, the strategic planning topic for today. And this will be on the agenda for the next meeting um, for sure. Um, okay, so then the next thing on the agenda is this letter to Gary Muntz that, um, Stephen was kind enough to draft, and I'm going to go back to sharing my screen so you can see this letter, which came to me today. So we didn't have time to get it to you. Um, um, you know, before the meeting, but this is the letter that uh, Garrett, that um, Stephen has drafted. <clears throat> on behalf of the Washington County Commission on Aging, I'd like to extend a sincere thank you for your leadership during the embryonic year. Mm -hmm. Your tenacity, perseverance, and personal sacrifice did not go unnoticed by a single member of the commission and was greatly appreciated. During your tenure, this Commission on Aging was able to gain insights into the needs of the older adult community through presentations by half a dozen service providers. The commission was able to author an aging needs summary report that will be leveraged to support the Commission on Aging's recommendation to the county commissioners that they allocate a significant portion of ARPA funding to help older adults heal from the deleterious effects of the pandemic. Your strong advocacy for the Commission on Aging to initiate a strategic planning process did not go unheard. This will be a major goal in the second half of 2022. <clears throat> Again, we want to thank you not only for your skill and demeanor in chairing and cheering on your fellow Commission on Aging members during the meetings, but also for all of the thankless hours you spent behind the scenes. <clears throat> you should know that you are missed, but none of us doubt even for a minute that you will ever stop working to improve the lives of vulnerable older adults in our county. And then it would be signed by myself. So I think we probably should have a motion to have this letter sent to Mr. Muntz unless someone wants to talk about it before we get to that point. I see Bonnie and then I see Margaret. Can it be signed from the entire commission rather than just Marta? 
That sounds fine to me. Margaret? Uh, yeah, I'd agree with that. And gosh, Steve, it is a really nice letter. Thank you for drafting that. Um, uh, really sounds just perfect to me. And I, I would move that we um, uh, approve the letter and uh, have it from the commission itself. Do you have a support? I support. Okay, uh, procedural question. I think that we can give the, this letter text to Stephanie and have her send it out on behalf. Um, I don't believe we have a letterhead, so I'm not really sure how that, what the process for that is going to be. I'll let Peter and Stephanie figure out what kind of paper it goes on. I thought, Peter, you had some kind of little... I, I can get something for you. Yeah, I thought you had some kind of little document thing you said you could drop it into, you know... Okay. Yeah, no, I, 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 I can... I can take care of that. I can take the text uh, as, as y'all approve. Uh, uh, if you approve shortly, uh, I, I can help uh, with Stephanie to get that out. Yeah, and I can send this text to Stephanie if I, if I haven't already done that. I can't remember if I have. Stephen and then Bonnie. Oh, I have to yeah. Down. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that for the first line, if we're going to send it out by the whole commission, it probably should say something like the Washington County Commission on Aging would like to extend, members would like to extend the sincere thank you. I agree, sounds good. I can amend that as we speak here. Okay. Um, any other discussion before we vote on this motion. Stephanie? Okay, Marta Larson? Yes. Marie Grass? Yes. Bonnie Weber? Yes. Carolyn Offen? Use your thumb up, thumb down if you can't yes. find it. Yes. <laughs> Steve Stein? No. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> that threw me off. <laughs> so you're actually voting yes, Stephen? Yes. Okay. Bennett Stark? Yes. And Margaret Reynolds? Yes. Okay, the motion passes. Everybody wants to be a comedian. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the next item on the agenda is a report from the chair. And the only thing I really have to report is that the officers have taken a step to um, be more rigorous about getting meeting materials out before meetings. We have set up an officer's meeting schedule for the entire remainder of this calendar year. Um, and we are committed to try to get materials to you by the Friday before a meeting every time. So, um, and given that Peter and Stephanie are gonna be working to figure out what's going wrong with Margaret getting the materials on time. Margaret, if you don't have materials by Monday before the meeting, you probably wanna check in with them and let them know that whatever they did didn't work. <laughs> we need to keep working on it until it gets fixed. Um, that's the only thing I have for report from the chair. I see Bonnie's hand. Uh, just, so, just so you know that that um, Stephanie is typing in individual email addresses right now because she can't get the list server to work. So her and Peter are working on that. She tried sending out three times the one document last time and they still couldn't get it to unglitch. So there is a glitch going on. So if if you're you know if we say you're going to get documents and just make a little mental note and shoot Marta or Maria or I a note and say hey I didn't get those. And then we can follow or Stephanie and say, hey, I, I didn't see those. And then we can make sure that you get them. I know it's hard to remember to ask for something you forgot that you were going to get, but um, we're still working through that glitch. So, you know, so everything is being done manually right now. Okay. Uh, all right. So we don't have any new, are we, 
Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess I should say I am going to be presenting to the Board of Commissioners on April 20th. Mm -hmm. The meeting starts at 530. I don't know exactly what time I'm going to be presenting, but I will be there at 530, duly waiting for my opportunity. Um, and I have a PowerPoint put together. Um, and um, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, it will go well. Marie? I had a, an item for new business. Is now a good time for that? Yeah. Uh, I had a couple of community members ask that we consider uh, various religious observances in our calendar. Today would be Good Friday for Christians and Passover for um, Jews. So um, it was requested that we consider that going forward in our meeting schedule. <clears throat> my response to that is that there are so many real world religions that I am concerned that if we start recognizing some, we're going to go down a very long slippery slope toward territory that I'm not even sure I completely understand all the parts of it. So I personally am not in favor of recognizing religious holidays in governmental affairs. Um, but that's just my point of view. Does anybody else have anything on that? Bonnie? Well, we follow the, we follow, follow the counties, right? Our, our meetings have to be in compliance with the county when they have, you know, Mm -hmm. recognized holidays or recognized days off correct and our meetings are our meetings being um posted recorded and posted on the website yet i mean are are they peter are they currently being posted in on the website yeah they're updated every like month so they're kind of like there's a lag to getting them up but they are posted after minutes are approved and at the end at the end of the month that minutes are approved, all videos for the last month have been up uploaded. So um, since this is the last meeting of like this month, all of the March meetings will be uploaded very shortly. Okay, Does that make so, sense? Yeah, so they could be, so they can go out and see the, go out and see the video if they, if they, if they wanted to. So I guess my, my feeling would be that we follow what the county already has scheduled and we follow the county calendar because it's difficult enough following various ones. Stephen? Um, shockingly, I have a differing view. Um, I, um, you know, I think we should listen to the community. Um, that, you know, there's relatively few holidays in, you know, the religious calendar that, you know, would require this to occur, Good Friday being one of them. Um, you know, I'm Jewish and observe Passover, wouldn't expect that to be a holiday. It, it doesn't start till tonight anyway, but wouldn't expect that one to be um, such a holiday. But, you know, there are certain holidays that, that I think is reasonable for us to have um, plan ahead and then have a meeting on that Thursday or that Wednesday. So not to stop having it, but just to, um, think out maybe in 2023, um, if we can, can consider um, listening to the community on that, um, since we do want active engagement. And in fact, would love to see active engagement of um, churches and synagogues and mosques around the, the county. Well, I think we should make it clear, there's no way we can have a meeting on a county holiday. That's just not gonna happen. So if the county Correct. has a holiday scheduled, we're not going to be having a meeting, period. Correct. Because we won't have any county support. So I, I'm really not sure how we got on to meeting schedules. But Peter, do you want to chime in? And then Bonnie and then Stephen again. I was just going to say, since this is coming up for a new business, obviously it can be put on a, on an agenda item in the future to like talk about more thoroughly. Um, and if, if that is the case, let me know. And I can check to see if there's any like rules or uh, best practices that the county uses on, on this topic specifically, just because I know it can get a little fuzzy because uh, local <laughs> government, like if you look at our list of holidays, they're 
um, very specific of what they what we do and don't uh, include. So I can check to see if there's any like guidance that can be given around this area to see if there's like flexibility or not. So uh, if you want to, I'm not going to say that stop talking about it now, but if you want to like have this on an agenda of a future item, I can make sure to have that information ready to go so you can have an informed discussion with county policy. And if we could have a written um, version of the request so it's clear what's being asked for, um, that would be very helpful. So can that be ready for the next officer's meeting? Was that you that brought that up, Marie, in the first place? I'm sorry, you cut out. Can you say that again? Yes, I'd like to see a written version of what's being asked, what's being requested. Sure, so I can do that. Because I think yeah. we kind of maybe got off what was actually asked, yeah. but I'm not really sure what was really requested. So we need to have a written version of that for the next officer's meeting so we can then yeah. prepare to send that out to the whole commission. Okay. Okay, Bonnie? Yeah, and if Peter, if if you could send that before so the officers can review that at the officers meeting, I would appreciate that. And just a note, um, I am Catholic and I have worked in for forever. And um, on Good Friday, typically Catholics take off at noon and that's where they they will go to their services afternoon. I mean, that has been my tradition and I'm 69 years old. So I'm not quite sure where that request came from, Marie, um, especially since uh, Stephen said Passover usually is in the evening. So yeah, so I'd like to see what Peter has to say and we can go from there. Thanks. Okay, um, so we have a list of potential future topics um, that is on the bottom of the agenda. I won't reread it, but those things are all under consideration by the officers. Um, our next meeting is on May 6th. Uh, the items that I have written down right now that will be on the agenda are officer terms, strategic planning, and the religious holidays question in whatever form that takes. Um, Bennett, did you have something? Well, I have a um, procedural question, which I doesn't deserve the audience of the whole um, commission. So should I wait to ask? Or should I ask now? Well, you certainly have me curious. Oh, well, it's nothing significant, it's um, nothing maybe you to you. Okay, the story is that um, I think uh, Peter or someone said it's important that if you make a motion and the, the motion dies for whatever reason, for that individual to withdraw the motion, now, can someone explain why? I'm not sure that I ever have made a, uh, a motion, but I could conceivably in the future. Why is it desirable or necessary to withdraw a motion that you have made that has in one way or another failed? Um, I, I, I think that's a Robert rule, Robert's rule of order question. Um, and, you know, Robert's rules of order get kind of, um, you can kind of get pretty deep in the weeds pretty fast when you're talking about Robert's rules. But um, if you're talking about what happened today, Stephen made a motion and it was supported. And then he decided after listening to the discussion and before any vote was taken to withdraw his motion. And then the person who seconded it also had to be consulted as to whether it was acceptable to withdraw the motion. So that was what was procedural about today. The discussion we had about bylaws, uh, we were actually moving to rescind a previously passed motion. And so it was necessary to consult with the person who made the motion and the person who supported the motion to determine whether that would be acceptable. Again, under Robert's rules of orders, so that's kind of the way it's required to happen. Okay, <laughs> thank you. And I, I would, although this is not something I would encourage, if you're having any insomnia issues, I would suggest you get yourself a little copy of Robert's Rules. And <laughs> um, you know, I think you'll find it um, quite, uh, um, quite worthy of a good snooze after you get done, if you're not too confused to sleep, at least. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, it's, it's, it gets complicated. Stephen. Yeah, uh, I, I just wanted to comment on the use of the term strategic planning. 
because I think that's, not, I mean, I, I'd want us to reflect on really what um, we're talking about is strategic planning. It sounds like what the intent is really to talk about what are we gonna do for the next six months. Um, and when I think about strategic planning, it's, it's longer term um, the, and it's, um, so I, I just wanted to see if people would be open to calling it something different so that if and when we do strategic planning, that it's not confused with really just looking at, ahead to the next six months and, and what we want to accomplish in six months. How about if we call it short and long-term strategic planning? Would that be acceptable? I mean, I think the group can say, I just don't see it as strategic planning. I think it, it's more of a question of what milestones are we hoping to meet in the next six months? So my, milestone, <laughs> year, year milestone planning, I don't know. Just. Uh, we'll take that under advisement, yes. Okay. We are actually 20 minutes early and I see no reason to extend the meeting um, just because we have a time scheduled. So I think we should, um, oh, I could see Ellen or Margaret rather has a, her hand up, I'm sorry. Um, well, I just have a comment about the, the um, holding meetings on holidays. I looked at my calendar and there are no more Fridays uh, with a holiday during this year, there is Veterans Day on the 11th of November, but that's about it. So we have time. I don't think that makes the discussion uh, unwarranted, but it's just, we have time. Okay, good. And we will screen for county holidays and look at the calendar to make sure we haven't messed up in any way. Um, okay. Any other discussion that's needed? Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess we'll have a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Support? I second it. Thank you. Okay, and all those in favor can signify verbally. Aye, or wave Aye. your hand, thumbs Aye. up, whatever you want to vote. And thank you everyone for being so efficient that we gave ourselves 19 extra minutes in our day today. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Right. Bye. 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 Bye.